Happy Summerween! It is day one of Summerween. I, it's the start of a long weekend, 4th of July weekend, and my first book is a Fear Street book, Lights Out. I thought this would be fitting for Summerween for many reasons because it's a spooky horror book. It's set at camp, Camp Nightwing, and it's also the premiere of the Fear Street movie on Netflix, the first one. So I started reading this today and so far it's just kind of setting up everything. We meet our main character Holly who is helping her uncle Bill, I think his name is, at his Camp Nightwing that has had some uh, tough times. I think some kid even died there one year and it's giving me very much Friday the 13th vibes. There's even a character they describe as Kevin Bacon and they're at the campfire for their first night and a guy in a hockey mask just came out of the woods which I'm assuming is going to be somebody playing a prank but I'm liking it so far. I'm excited to read a few Fear Street books to get me ready for the movie tonight and I'm excited for Summerween. This is my first time participating and I'm I'm very excited. Let's get spooky. Hello, happy day two of Summerween. I'm with my niche, Faith. What is a niche? A niece, but a niche. Uh, so we are stopping at a used uh, thrift bookstore where I'm gonna take you along and hopefully find some spooky books. She can't live in the moment. Nonsense, child. <laughs> We are back from thrift store shopping and I got a ton of books for only $17 and I got some new releases. <coughs> Faith got a book about gardening. They don't gar garden. I do. I have like four plants. Show off your creepy mask. Creepy mask. That's what mm -hmm. I picked up a hardcover copy of The Ruins. I have a paperback copy but I like reading from hardcovers more and I want to read this this summer because Everybody says it's a perfect summer horror. I've seen the movie, I'll read the book. And next, we got The Devil in the White City. So it's about murder, magic, and madness at the fair that changed America. I think it's about H.H. H. Holmes, but I could be wrong. You probably are wrong. If it's not H.H. H. Holmes, it's somebody else. It's another serial killer. Is he a real person? Yeah. Oh, I also found Children of the Night by Dan Simmons. I've always wanted to read Dan Simmons. I haven't read anything by him, but He's always recommended and I don't know if this is a sequel. I also picked up Behind Her Eyes. I mean, I didn't have that much interest in picking it up before, but this was only $2. So yeah, so I already know what this book, the twists and turns, but I'm interested to see how the book is. It might make it more enjoyable for me because I know the twists. I found this Stephen King, which I don't know much about, but it sounds like interesting. This boy finds a camera and he keeps seeing this vicious dog in the camera. Then I picked up The Midnight Library, which 
I've been wanting to read. It's not horror, but this has a hardcover and it was only $2. It's about a girl. She's like transported into another dimension in the library or something. I don't know. Oh, and I was excited to find this one, The Vanishing Half. This is also not really horror. It's about two black women, I believe, and one of them tries to live like a white, pass herself off as white. It was only $2. $2. And then I found a copy of Desperation, which I've read most of, but I haven't finished it yet. It's long, it's thick, but I couldn't pass up this adorable cover. And then the last one is Facebook, Flesh Eaters. Yeah, zombies. It's about zombies. So there you have it. That's my day two summer ween book haul. I got some good books and then I'm gonna go home and read some stuff, not from any of these books. I'm gonna read my uh, Fair Street book, which I'm almost, done with we got a death a gruesome death of a teenager last night in my nice. reading which is pretty interesting pretty good it's what i was waiting for and we are in the last uh 40 pages where hopefully some more people die creepy masks <laughs> stay tuned so I just finished this book. I thought this was an average Fear Street book. It has the usual cliffhanger chapters that I feel like these books are famous for. R.L. Stein is really good at creating those cliffhangers so that you want to re continue reading and he's good at creating a sense of danger where you think the character is in more danger than they really actually are so you continue reading but then it turns out it was just something minuscule or a prank. Uh, it's pretty predictable but in pretty juvenile because it's written for teens so and I feel like as a seasoned reader of horror and thriller I was able to predict it but I think a teen in the 90s probably wouldn't have been able to I don't know it was fun um there were some dark moments like the girl gets bullied at one point and it kind of made me really uncomfortable because she has these two boys holding her down and it was scary it kind of made me really uneasy and uh there's leeches involved which was gross. And there's also a death, a kind of brutal death, which shocked me. It shocks me that teens actually die in, in these books. And there's a really action-packed climax, which I also think R.L. Stein is good at doing. He's good at writing action scenes. And the character grows and I like that, but she kind of forgave these dudes that were super abusive towards her the whole time just like super easily and I didn't like that but overall I think this was average fun summer read and I would say maybe it would be a three stars 2.53 nothing crazy not my favorite so this one was pretty tame in comparison to some of the others I've read but it was fun it was a fun quick read that was the perfect way to kick off summer ween so I think the next one I'm going to pick up is the betray the betrayal which is a book a witch one it's set back in the olden days and i think that also hopefully will maybe have some tie into the fear street movie which i haven't watched yet but i'll touch base when i actually start that and have some more to say <laughs> So I'm reading this and Susanna Good has been thrown in jail by her boyfriend's dad because her dad found out that they had a relationship and Edward is the son and he's supposed to marry somebody else and he didn't want to because he wanted to marry Susanna and then the dad was like well I'll show you I'll accuse your daughter of being a witch and then Susanna thinks oh okay my boyfriend is going to rescue us he's going to save us well he just showed up at the jail cell and she was like did you come here to rescue us and he's like no bitch why the fuck would I do that you're a witch why would my father lie like, how could you betray me like this? Mm. Men, man, men, they never, they never get better. From the 1600s accusing women of witches to now 2021, 
they're just all the same. You know? You know what I'm saying? So, fuck Edward. Fuck Edward for being a dick. And I hope Susanna gets them all back. I want I want Susanna to get revenge. And I want I want Edward to burn. I want Edward to burn. I will touch base and hopefully have some good news for you. Hopefully Edward fucking burns up in flames and Susanna lives happily ever after, but I don't think she's going to, okay? I think she's gonna die. A horrible, horrible death. But I don't blame her for cursing everybody. Motherfuckers got to be cursed for this. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And this is a big, big scorn. So, stay tuned. Whoa. Okay, so this book, I'm about 70 pages in, a little over that. And it feels very much adult in comparison to other Fear Street books that I've read. Other Fear Street books that I've read feel very much juvenile because they're written for teens. But this one feels different. It feels more adult i don't know how to describe it it just doesn't feel childish so susanna spoilers but susanna was just burned at the stake with her mother and it's pretty dark i didn't expect it to happen but it's sad because the she this her chapter ends with it's not gonna hurt mom is it it's not gonna hurt and then the father is watching them burn alive and he was betrayed by one of the fear brothers who said, if you pay me money, I'll set them free. I'll tell my brother to let them go. But that guy was just scamming him so he could leave town with all of his money. So William, after he watched his wife and daughter burn alive, goes into the secret room in his house and he starts chanting stuff because he was a witch. Motherfucker. This motherfucker is a witch and he knew that his wife and daughter were falsely accused and he did nothing to help them. He watched them burn alive. <sighs> men. Men, men, men. I mean, really? I mean, so you, you, you have the power to save your wife and child, but you do nothing because you are a selfish prick. You are a selfish motherfucker. And I mean, couldn't he have cast a spell or something to save them? I don't know. Use your fucking witchcraft to get them out. <laughs> Put a curse on these motherfuckers who were holding your wife and daughter captive. Couldn't you have done that? But no, he waits until they burn alive. And then he puts a curse on their family. The men in this story, I do not like them. I do not like them one bit. <sighs> the children downstairs are making lots of noise. So that's my cue to go because they're uh, tormenting my dog. I gotta go. And I will touch base when I read a little bit more, but so far this story is really good. I'm really liking it, and I fucking hate the men of Shady Side. I look like Zelda from Pet Cemetery right now, but. I just got to a part where a character's head exploded. Just can't get over this. Jeremy's head exploded with a low pop. At first, no one was certain where the sound had come from. Mary was the first to realize that something horrible had happened. Jeremy's skull cracked open, and the skin on his face blistered and peeled away. Pink brains bubbled up from his open skull. His face appeared to melt away, and another face pushed up from under the shattered skull. What the fuck? This is gnarly. Hello, it is day four of Summer Ween. So last night I finished The Betrayal in the R.L. Stein Fear Street series. I really, really liked this one. It's essentially the start of a trilogy of these two feuding families, the goods and the fears. So what happened is the fear family, who is a more wealthy, prominent family in this town. They, in this village, they accuse the Goods uh, women, Susanna Good and her mother Martha, of being witches, and then they burn her alive at the stake. I have the other two books in the trilogy, and I really want to finish it. I just don't know if I'm going to finish it for Summerween, because I really want to get to another horror book 
and this was just so good this this surprised me by how good it was and how it did not feel like a book written for teens it was it had some really creepy disturbing scenes in this there's women burning at stakes it's it's scary it's creepy if I read this as a teen I, I would have been terrified so this is definitely if you have never read a fear street book before and you want to get started I would get started with this because this is top notch and then after that, I picked up a copy, I picked up my copy of The Ruins, which I wasn't planning on reading, but it was just calling my name. And I, I read about 20 pages of it last night. And so this is a story about four friends who are, uh, they're on vacation in Mexico and they basically meet this guy who is looking for his brother and he's like I think he went to this archaeological dig site and they're like we'll come with you because they think oh it will be a good time it will be a part of their adventure little did they know these ruins that they stumble upon are kind of cursed with these parasite plants I've seen the movie I really liked the movie and it was really gruesome and I am expecting this book to be just as gruesome. I've heard very good things about it. I've heard people whose opinions I really trust with books say this is one of the best horror books they've ever read. So I don't know. I'm, I've just got the setup right now. I haven't actually made it to the ruins, but I think they're almost there and I haven't gotten into the creepy stuff yet. I like the setup and I'm really interested to see how this plays out. I haven't seen the movie in years, so this is going to be new to me and I feel like reading about it's very body horror from what I remember and I reading body horror is much harder for me than watching it because I feel like your imagination runs wild so I'm expecting that to happen with this I, I don't know how it's going to compare with the troop but that's what I have in mind the troop really bothered me and unsettled me, but I, I don't know what this is going to be like. So I will touch base when I read a little bit more. So these people in the village that they're they're passing through are acting pretty strange. They're following them along the path. They're being super weird and then they find the path that leads to the ruins and it's covered. And you think that at that point they would be like, "Hey, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Maybe we should go home." And one of the characters, Amy, who is described as being difficult and being the pouty one that always complains, like that's what they refer to her as. She's the only one who's questioning it and concerned about it. She's like, why would the path be covered? And they're like, well, maybe the archeologists were finding stuff of value and they didn't want anybody to come and take it. So uh, these people are stupid, stupid Americans, as you know, we often are in horror films and they're just walking right into danger and they don't even they're not even seeing the signs so do they deserve it maybe maybe they do maybe so we'll see they're making stupid decisions and they're gonna die the path was covered for a reason motherfuckers it's covered for a reason don't go places you know nothing about and you don't belong because you'll find trouble there. That's the Summerween uh, wisdom for today. Thank you. Hello, it is day five of Summerween. I have read about 70 pages of the Ruins. I picked up some more Fear Street books. The first one is Halloween Night 
Brenda hates her cousin Hallie, and Brenda isn't the only one because Hallie keeps stealing other people's boyfriends. Not cool, Hallie. So Brenda and her friends decide to plan the perfect murder. Something to go along with Brenda's perfect Halloween party. Not that they're really going to kill anybody. It's just a joke, right? I'm in. And then I picked up Halloween Night Part 2, which is, uh, I don't want to read it because it will probably give away the details of Halloween Night one. But these covers are perfect. They are such Halloween moods. I wish I had these uh, at the start of Summerween because these would have been cool to read during Summerween. I'm uh, about 70 pages in with uh, the ruins. They are on the ruins and uh, one of the characters has fallen down a shaft and broken his leg and the other character, one of the Americans, went down to get help to help him and that's where I left off. And yeah, what I'm liking about uh, the ruins is that whole uh, language barrier between the Mayan, the people in the Mayan village and the tourists, the American tourists, who are also there with two Greeks who don't speak anything aside from Greek and the American tourists don't understand the Greek either. So there's just so much miscommunication going on from all all angles and that's terrifying to me like going into a foreign country and not knowing the language and getting yourself into a situation that's dangerous and scary so yeah i really do like that i think that's scary in itself so there's a lot of that that's how these american tourists got themselves onto the ruins when the mayans were trying to warn them to stay away but then they touched the ruins and now the mayans aren't going to let them leave Hello! Happy day is a day, what is today? It's July 7th, so it's day 6 of Summerween, I think. And I am, I am slacking. I am about 155 pages into the ruins. We have finally got some vine action where the vines are finally, they're finally figuring out that the vines are no good and the vines are the reason that the Mayans aren't letting them off this this hill, this ruin. So Pablo, who is one of the Greeks, he had fallen down a shaft and he broke his back. So he woke up screaming because the vines were all over his legs and they basically tore the skin off of his legs. And Jeff, I think, it, no, not Jeff, uh, Eric, uh, Stacy's boyfriend, he woke up and the vine was all up his leg on, on his groin and holding onto his penis, his penis. Men, be careful, uh, it might be a little difficult for you to read. And then the vine got into a cut he had on his leg, so now he's freaking out. He still is thinking that these vines are in his leg. And everybody's like, no, no, dude, we got it out, it's fine. But he's like, no, no, you didn't, you didn't. It's still in there, I can feel it, I know it is. And they're trying to ration uh, their goods, they're trying to think of a plan uh, to get out of there, but uh, I got news for you. I don't think they're getting out of there. I feel like it's weird. It's like this moves slow, but at the same time it isn't moving slow. I just feel like I don't know how to describe it. Like it takes 30 pages for him to describe what's going on in a character's head. Like one character was wanting to drink water that they were supposed to be rationing and she was going back and forth on her head for like three pages and I was like, can you just can you just hurry up? Can you just drink the fucking water? And can we just get to the action? So I've been skimming through some parts because it gets annoying. I just want it to, I just want it to ramp up. I don't care about what they did in second grade, okay? It has nothing to do with the story and it's not really giving me a lot of insight into the character. Um, and frankly, I don't care. I just, I just want to read about them dying brutally from these plants. So, but it's good when it's good. When the action's there, it's good. It's great. So hopefully it just keeps going from there. So yeah, again, I'll touch base when I have a little bit more to read and a little bit more to say. See ya. What up? It is the final day of Summerween and I've got my trick or treat shirt on and I am hanging on by a thread. 
actually you know what I'm almost finished with this book I think I can do it guys I think I can finish this tonight we are in the final stretch the final countdown and it will be a summer ween miracle if I do finish this but I couldn't put it down last night and I am on a page 263 there are like 307 pages so you do the math because I'm not going to but I don't have that much to go and uh you know what? This book is good, but I don't feel like as obsessed with it or th I, I don't think it's, I don't want to like suck its dick or anything, you know? Like I don't think it's the most amazing horror book I've ever read and I don't know if that's because I've already seen the movie and a lot of it is similar to the movie, but also I think the movie improved on a lot of stuff because some of the stuff in here kind of moves a little slow for my, my liking. Uh, but they did surprise me with a character death that does not happen in the movie, so I don't know how this is going to end now. They switched things up, like certain things that happen to a character in the film doesn't happen to them. It's happening to a different character. Yeah, I don't know, it's not as gross as I was expecting. Like, yes, there are some gross visuals, but I think the troop was a lot harder for me to read, probably because of all the animal cruelty. But yeah, it's good. I'm just not obsessed with it, you know? But it's real it's a very well written book, I think. I don't uh, I've seen a lot of people see say that the characters are assholes and I don't know. I just think they're just normal 20 something kids, you know? Like not everybody is fucking likable. I I relate. I mean, I feel bad because I feel like why do I feel bad? I don't these are not real people. <laughs> I like Jeff mostly I think because I'm imagining the actors from the film. I like the actors a lot. The actor who played Jeff was Jonathan Tucker, Amy is played by Jenna Malone, uh, Sean Ashmore plays Eric, and Sarah Ramsey I believe her name is, she plays Stacy. So I think the actors are all really likable and I think that's warping my, my view of the characters in the book. But the only thing that concerns me is how the fuck are these people in a relationship with each other like none of them seem to really even like each other so and especially Jeff and Amy I don't know how their relationship I guess that's life I I've been in relation a relationship with somebody where we were complete opposites and um, I mean that happens a lot so I don't know I guess it's it's real life I don't know but it's interesting it's not grossing me out as much as I thought it would but it's enjoyable. Uh, it's just it's taking forever, kind of. I don't know. I have I'm conflicted. I've seen a lot of people give it five stars. I think it's a three star for me. Five star is like on another level for me, and this isn't blowing me away. And I don't know these fucking vines, man. They're alive, and they are trolling the shit out of these people. They are huge trolls. They can mimic people. They can mimic people. And they can uh, kill them. They can kill them. I'm not going away anywhere. I'm not going anywhere to any Mayan ruins. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying in my house forever. And I'll just, I'll be safe that way. Except when uh, the bat from the attic comes down and, and kills me. So, yeah. I guess you're not safe anywhere. That is the moral of this, uh, this vlog. <sighs> we have finished. We have made it to the end, my friends. And it was longer than 307 pages like I originally thought. It was like 315, but still close enough. And wow, this book is bleak. The ending is much darker than the ending of the film. And yeah, it's just depressing. <laughs> I don't feel good about it. I didn't, I didn't go into this expecting to feel good about it. Uh, I've seen the movie. I know that a lot of shit happens and a lot of people die. Uh, so yeah, this is basically a story of survival and isolation and what happens when a group of people are stuck in a situation where they can't get out of and they're basically in a fight for their lives. People start, stop thinking clearly and they start start acting based on their emotions and a lot of decisions were made in this book that could have been avoided there's a lot of tension because i mean there was tension to begin with before the group made it 
to the ruins but then once they were stuck together they were low on food low on water they were injured they were stuck in the heat people were literally dying around them the tension rose to like the highest level so it, it was just an interesting uh, experience to see how these people handled what was happening to them because they didn't handle it well no one handled it well I don't think I would have handled it well but you know what no no, I'm sorry. I never, I never would have been in this situation. I would have been like, ah, I, I, I don't think so. These guys are yelling at us right now. They don't want us to go here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back to the hotel. You know, I'll catch you next time, maybe, maybe not. But I'm not going on these fucking ruins, okay? I, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it was good. I wasn't obsessed with it. A lot of people love this book. Like people, literally love it. And I feel like there's something wrong with me because I didn't love it that much. I liked it, I enjoyed it, but I probably will never read this again. It's gruesome, it's arduous. Is that the right word? I, I don't use that word frequently, so I'm trying to sound like I have a good vocabulary. It's daunting, it's bleak, it's, yeah, that ending, man. The ending is bleak. It's almost as dark as the ending of The Mist, but that ending was way worse. The movie. But... I'll tell you one thing. We have survived Summerween. I was thinking of maybe reading another book, but no. No. It is like 6.30, 7 o'clock. I need to lie down. I don't feel very well. You know what? Me and my skeleton, we're gonna go eat some chicken pot pie that I heated up in the microwave. We're gonna think on things and we're gonna be proud of ourselves. We're gonna be super proud of ourselves for getting through our first summer ween together. Oh, he's not even in the shot. And yeah, so we're gonna go chill for the rest of the night, maybe pass out, watch a horror movie. I didn't do anything extra spooky during this because my entire life is spooky. Barlow just entered. If you hear any noises, that's him as usual. Oh, he's, Barlow, come on, dude. Uh, oh, yeah, my life is a horror movie. My life is Halloween. Every day, every day. So, yeah, this was fun. Uh, I started off strong. I crashed very badly. You know what? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I did a good job. Um, my energy level crashed. But, yeah, I did it. I made it. I'm so excited. And it makes me so happy to know that there are so many people out there participating in Summerween and reading spooky books that there's a love of spooky books and I can't wait to see everybody else's Summerween videos like there's been a lot that I've been I, I've been holding off because I want to I want to savor them but if you if you participated in Summerween please let me know down in the comments because I want to watch I want to see what everybody's reading see if I get any recommendations but yeah I love this and thank you to Gabby and Olivia for creating this it's, it gave me the Halloween vibes that I desperately, desperately need at this time because it's hot as hell out and I have a bat in my fucking attic. I did pretty good. I'm pretty proud of myself. And tomorrow, Friday, is this part two of Fear Street. So I'm going to watch that and maybe I'll read some more Fear Street. Who knows? But yeah, thank you for joining me on this Summerween journey. My first read along that I've ever participated in uh summerween read-along and i hope you enjoy my vlog my spiral my spiral into madness uh through books and i hope you uh stick around if you like spooky stuff if you like spooky books spooky movies and halloween because halloween season is right around the corner i'm gonna be shopping oh barlow excuse me sir i am making a video sir I get no respect from this motherfucker. Anyway, I gotta go. I gotta go ra wrangle him, but yeah. Spooky season is coming. I'm hopefully gonna do some Halloween hunting, and I hope you join me. I hope you join me. Let me know what you're reading, what spooky shit you're watching, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.